Welcome back everyone to Only Boss Fights and today we're diving deep into the brand new game Flintlock Siege of Dawn. I'll be giving you my honest opinion on the game and how long it took me to collect all the achievements, including which ones are the hardest. So let's dive right in. First things first, let's talk about the game itself. Flintlock Siege of Dawn is an action adventure game that took me around 22 hours to complete the main story. You play as Norvanek, a sapper of the coalition who is making up for opening the door to the underworld by fighting against the old gods. Combat in Flintlock Siege of Dawn is rather simple and the game has been described as a soul slide. There is no stamina meter and the parry window is quite generous. That's why I would rather describe it more like a God of War light. While the combat is fluent, it doesn't offer much variety in terms of builds and you won't find yourself customising your character in any way, let alone unique ways like you would in Elden Ring. I also found it really weird that with the armour, you can upgrade the helmets to like legendary status, but not any of the other pieces of armour. If you're gonna let upgrades of armour, you have to be able to upgrade every single piece of the armour. One of the unique mechanics this game does have is the combat multiplier. As you chain different moves together, your combat multiplier increases, rewarding you for a variety of moves. However, if you get hit, you lose that multiplier, and with enemies often popping out from hidden spots, keeping that multiplier high can be quite challenging and not worth it most of the time. Another unique aspect is Anki, the god of death. He acts as your companion in this game. Anki can use death curses to aid you in combat, which increases the stagger bar of enemies. It's a cool feature, but it doesn't completely make up for the overall lack of combat variety. Now, one of my biggest pet peeves for this game is that unfortunately, the game doesn't offer a lot in the bosses department. There are only four real god bosses, which is a bit disappointing given the game's potential for epic encounters. Even the optional bosses that you have to go out your way to find are not rememberable in the slightest. Now, for all you trophy hunters out there, this is where things get interesting. Flintlock Siege of Dawn has a total of 50 achievements. These range from story related achievements to combat challenges and of course the dreaded collectible hunting. So let's break it down. The story related achievements are pretty straightforward and are unlocked as you progress through the game. They're not missable so you'll get them just by playing through the main story. Examples include God Killer for defeating Ramu. Now combat achievements, these require you to perform specific actions during combat. Like killing 20 enemies with a headshot gets you the headhunter achievement. Or applying three different status effects onto a single enemy gets you the malediction achievement. Some of these can be tricky, but they're generally manageable with a bit of practice. Or, like me, you usually get them just playing the game and accidentally doing stuff to them. Now we get on to the exploration achievements. These involve finding hidden areas, completing side quests and collecting various items scattered through the world. Examples include Ruffled for finding all of Enki's feathers and a place to call home for freeing all the hamlets. This is the way it can get a bit tedious as some collectibles are very well hidden and you need to collect materials to upgrade your guns which do not respawn so once you collected a piece of material you can't come back and find it and it can be a bit of a nightmare. Now onto the miscellaneous achievements. These are a mixed bag including things like mistakes were made achievement for dying 10 times. There's also the shore beats walking achievement for activating 50 skulls that open rifts for fast travel. There's also a name for yourself where you need to convert at least a thousand battle experience into reputation in a single claim. Now this is the simplest one of these achievements. We will get on to the hardest ones next. Okay, with the hardest achievements, these are the ones, in my opinion, that the most challenging ones to get. Now, not all of these are hard, they can just be time consuming. First one is full arsenal. You have to collect all the firearms in the game. This one is a bit of a grind as it requires you to find and collect them all. Some of them are pretty well hidden. Second one is war hero. Now this one, I had to cheese. It, with a single claim, convert at least 50,000 battle experience into reputation. This requires careful planning and a lot of battle experience. 
or cheese it like I did because enemies do not give you that much experience and one hit wipes it all clean. The small mercies achievement is find all shrines of Inya. There are nine shrines in total and they are scattered across all three biomes. Some in very obscure locations but check your map because they will be shown when you get close. Number four, red flag. Now this game, with some of its achievements needed a red flag, but with this one achievement, shoot down all enemy banners. There are 30 banners to shoot down, 15 in the first biome, 15 in the second one, and they can be quite hard to spot. They are really well hidden and I had to use a bit of a guide but also very time consuming just running around and trying to find them and the final hard one is the home front this is complete every single side quest in the game this added on about an extra four hours to me bringing up the total playtime for me to 100 percent this game to 26 hours some of the side quests are quite lengthy but none of the side quests are rememberable Overall, Flintlock Siege of Dawn is an okay game. I played it on Game Pass for free, so I'm not complaining that much. It has mechanics that could be interesting, but it falls short in several areas. I'd rate it a 6 out of 10. The story and unique elements like Anki and the combat models can be enjoyable, but the lack of combat variety, build variety, and the grind for collectibles can dampen the experience. For trophy hunters, I give it a four out of 10. It doesn't take long, it's just can be boring to the end. Okay, that's it. Now let me know in the comments what my next game should be to find the completion time for you.